Hello. All right, so we're ready here. Um, I have a new sketchbook a watercolor pad that I just wanted to show you how you get paper out of it. So this is um, Archer's paper. You do not need Archer's paper, so please ignore the fact of the brand. But if you were curious, that's what it is. Um, and this has a protective sheet over the top, which all block watercolor palettes will have. So I'm just going to show you how to get one, the, the protective cover off, and two, once you finish your painting, how to get your sheet off. So I've opened this, and as you can see, around the very edges, it's all gummed up. I can't flick these pages, they're all stuck down. And that means that you don't have to stretch this paper. This paper is ready to go on the palette, uh, on the block, ready to go. However, I need to get to that first page. And there is a little gap here, you can see I can I can get to the paper and what I want to do is I want to get something sharp so here I've got a palette knife you could use a kitchen knife if it's sharp enough you can use the back of a, a blade um, whatever you have and I'm just going to slide that down and then run it along the edges And the sheet comes off and that could be thrown away put aside use it any other craft materials <clears throat> it doesn't really matter and now we have the paper ready to be painted on yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my tape uh, i'm using washi tape today and i'm going to tape up the edges of my page Uh, this whole video is going to be in real time. If you want to get your art materials, you want to get your paints, please go grab them um, and paint along with me, draw along with me. But of course, this is on YouTube, so feel free to pause it whenever you feel the need. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be somewhat straightforward. Last week in class, I know we didn't do it online, but last week in class uh, we did leaves and they were very fun. And if you were looking at my sketchbook where I was showing you the pictures, the paintings of the leaves that I had done previously, you'd see that next to those leaves was a little duck. And uh, Sorry. <laughs> and yeah, today we're going to paint the little, well, it's a goose really, isn't it? The little goose. So we are, I've just got the edges taped just so we now have <clears throat> some nice sharp edges once we're finished. I have clean water here. I've got my watercolour palette here and my swatch card. Very important. Have your swatch card so you know what colours and they're in the exact same place as they are here. Uh, the paintbrush I'm using today is my Da Vinci Petit Grouper. Um, it is series 418, I think, um, and it is a size zero. You could go bigger if you wanted to go bigger. This is quite a small uh, palette. Uh, I keep saying palette. This is quite a small Pad. I don't know. I can't remember what I called it earlier now. Yes. Anyway, um, and we will need a pencil. I have a mechanical pencil. If you just have a regular pencil, that's fine too. And we're going to do a little bit of sketching. So first off, we're going to eyeball about a third up the page. 
somewhere around here and I'm just going to do a light line across that and I'm going to draw a little line just down from the top just so I know that I don't want my goose to go any higher than this. I'm also going to do a line up from the bottom to know I don't want the bottom of my goose to go any lower than this little line here. And so I'm going to leave a gap from this bottom line and I'm going to draw sort of a circle, sort of a squished circle, kind of like an apple shape. Can you see this? So there is my apple shape. Ideally, this line can be as, as light as you can do it. Um, if you need it darker to see it, that's fine, but you will see the lines afterwards because it's watercolour and watercolour is transparent. So up at the very top now, where I put that dot, it's the very top of our goose's head. So I'm just going to draw a circle up here. Maybe I won't finish it at the bottom because that's where his neck's going to be. And I'm going to just pull his neck down. So that it goes into the circle somewhere by there. I'm just getting my reference so I know what a goose looks like. I might have immediately forgotten Okay, and now we're going to draw a triangle coming out the side of the goose. Here. I'm going to round the top off and put a C on the side. A bit closer. So I did a triangle at the side of the goose. I just rounded that top off and I added a C. And then I'm going to draw roughly where I want his eye to be. And now to the left hand side of the neck, on that big circle, I'm going to draw a triangle poking out. That's where his tail is. And now we're going to draw his legs. So at the very bottom, I'm going to draw two lines that are facing away from each other, down to the corners-ish. And I'm going to turn those into flat triangles. I'm going to draw a C on the back of this one and a backward C on the back of that one. And then I'm going to pull up little legs for our goose. And then in the middle of the outside of the triangle here, I'm going to add two little dots. So I can see. And from the corner of the one triangle to that dot, I'm going to do a C and I'm going to do a C. And again on the other side, I'm going to draw a C and I'm going to draw a C. And here is our basic goose. Cool. So if I just give you a quick peek at roughly what we're doing. We're going to allow the back to be as movement as, as, as possible. We're going to allow the water to move. We're going to allow the paint to move. We're then going to add in the bottom and we're going to be more backwards and forwards rather than allow it to spread. We're going to be a little bit more intentional with where we put our colours here. And then we'll add a little bit of colour to our goose and we'll be done.
<coughs> so to start here, I'm going to get my paintbrush. She says, immediately losing her paintbrush. My paintbrush, clean water, and now I want plenty of water on my brush. And I'm going to paint around my goose. I don't want to get any water inside my goose. So I'm going to add water to the sides, saturate my paper. And when I get close to my goose, I'm going to be very careful just using the end of my brush. More water. Now you can go below this line if you want to, and we can always work back into it later. I'm just gonna add a bit of water down there, but I'm not gonna to be too precious. Again, when I get to this edge of the goose, I'm being really careful not to get water on my goose. If you're doing this alongside with me, uh, it would be good to know. And if you are coming along to uh, class on Wednesday, I would love to see your gooses, your geeses. Um, although we are doing this on Wednesday, so I don't imagine I will put it out before the class where we do geese. Uh, but I will. Put it out after and maybe you can do another goose i would like to see your goose anyway so there we go as you can see can you see maybe that uh, the paper around my goose is wet i don't sure but my goose is not wet and now i'm going to think about my colors so I'm just going to keep making sure that this is wet because I want it wet. And the colours we're going to need are greens. So I'm just going to put some water on some of these greens down here. And I'm going to put some water on some of these yellows up here. Okay, and now I'm just going to go into one of them. So this is sap green up here. I'm going to fill my brush with sap green and I'm going to just place it in and scrub it in a little bit to my water. As you can see, it's going to spread and that's fine. That's what we want. We're not being precious here. We're being really careful not to get any of this green on our goose. We don't want a green goose, we want a white goose. Uh, so I'm gonna go down here and pick up some of this color. Nice. If you've only got your primaries, feel free to mix a couple of colors beforehand. Um, it's okay if your paper dries and you have to re-wet it. It's okay if you wanna add a bit more water whilst you're adding the paint down. I'm going to clean off my brush because I'm going to take all this green out of here and absorb it into my brush and place it on my painting. Now you can keep adding colour. Think about the colours mixing. So if you're adding greens and yellows, you can add greens and yellows until the goose comes home. You can just keep adding. That's not a problem. Because greens and, did I say yellows? Yeah, greens and yellows, they mix really well. They're very happy next to each other. Having some strokes, having some purposefully placed paint strokes is fine. And then allowing that paint to move however that paint wants to move is recommended. Play with those colors. Wow, that's dark. That's fine then. 
I'm going to wash my brush just so I've got some clean water, just so I can move this green around. There we go. Okay, so we can let this dry. Um, and I'm going to do that because I haven't got my heat gun. So I'll be back once this is dry. Um, you can let it dry on its own and the paint will continue to move around until it sort of feels very happy and then it, it'll, it'll stop moving as the paper gets more dry. Uh, or you can get a heat gun or a hairdryer on it and dry it that way. But feel free to keep adding yellows, keep adding uh, greens until you're really happy with your painting. That's a nice yellow. Let's get some of that in there. You can just mix the colours on the page. And if you've got paint down here in our lower section, don't worry about that. I'm going to let this dry and I'll see you in a moment. All right, so now we have a mostly dry goose. Some of it's a little bit wet, but that's not a problem. Uh, I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to think of the colours I want at the bottom. Again, probably greens, but I think I'm going to do quite a lot of maybe oranges and maybe a little bit of brown. So green, brown, orange. So I'm going to start with orange. Uh, I'm going to just add orange with a a wet brush but dry paper and now I'm going to go in with some water and spread it about to where I want it and I'm going to go in with green and I'm going back and forth I'm not I'm not allowing it to spread where I want I didn't pre-wet this paper so I'm in a little bit in I'm a, I'm a little bit more in control of where the paint goes this time. And I'm just going back and forth and making sure that my lines are horizontal. And I'm just going to make sure that I keep that line at the top um, visible and ish straight. Ish straight. Doesn't matter if it's wiggly. This is nature. Nature is wiggly. Uh, below my goose, I'm going to add a lot darker of a green. It's fine if you don't have darker green, you can add a brown. You can add your orange below his feet, maybe. And I'm being really careful again not get green in my goose. You don't want a green goose, you want a white goose. Well, a whitish goose. Now don't forget that his feet are going to be orange, so if you throw a lot of orange at his feet, um, you might have to make his feet yellow. And just lots of color. Here we go. So, again, I'm going to let this dry. Um, but in the meantime, if you have an eraser, feel free to lightly rub out this line across his tummy. and blow the pieces away from the water. <laughs> there we go. So now I have my goose. And when we get to painting the goose, as you can see with the example goose, we want him to be white. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of gray. Um, you could paint him a little bit blue, uh, but I'm gonna paint him a bit gray. So looking at my swatches here, this is Payne's Grey 
and it's a bluey grey so I'm actually going to use that but if you wanted to use a black that would be not a problem as well. You could use a blue down here. I'm going to leave the bottom because I'm just going to be really careful not to mix these colours. If you don't trust yourself to be careful not to mix those colours, dry your goose off. And now I'm going to think about light. Looking at my piece, I've got a lot of yellow down here. So maybe my light is coming in this direction. And so I'm going to add my grey. And it's got a lot of water in it and not a lot of colour. You can always add more colour. But I'm just going to add my grey down the side of my goose. This is a wet paintbrush on dry paper. And I'm just adding a little bit of colour down under his tummy. Where he would be darker and off to the side where he would be darker. Under his chin where he would have his head sticking out and a little bit under his beak. Here we are. And that's all you need just to get an impression that our goose is white. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run the heat gun over this bottom bit just to make sure it's dry. So when we add in the orange, there is no risk of me mixing. Uh, if you're sensitive to the sound, I'm about to turn the heat gun on. So that's mostly dry. There's no running water, so there's no risk of it mixing. I'm now going to go back into my orange. So I have quite a, a thick orange. And I'm going to go into my goose's beak and I'm just going to use the edge of my brush to lay some colour. Yeah, I'm going to wash my brush. So now I just have clean water and I'm going to spread what's already here about. All the way out to the end. And if you want to leave little white gaps, like I'm going to leave this little white gap here because it gives the impression that he has a little reflection on his beak. And I'm going to do the same down here with his legs. I can go in with my orangey brush. I don't necessarily need to pick up more paint. But if I'm painting and I think, hmm, it's not very orange, I'd like it to be more orange, then I can always go back into my paint and pick up a little bit more pigment or paint, same word. Same thing, different word. Um, Pick up a little bit more paint, add it in, and if at any point I think, mm, that's now a lot of orange paint, I'm just going to clean my brush off and go back in with the water. And here we have the main part of our goose. And I run the heat gun over it again. Warning for the loud noise. <laughs> There we are. And now I'm going to think about the details. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I have a fine liner, you could use 
a biro. You could use, oh, excuse me. You could use your pencil and go in with thicker lines. You could also use a pencil colour. What else could you use? If you've got a, uh, a gel pen, you could use a gel pen. Something just to bring out more details in our dress. So I'm going to use this. This is a brush fine liner. It's a Tombow brush pen. You don't need one. If you have one knocking around somewhere, maybe yours looks a little bit like this. And it's got an actual fine liner on the end. You can use that. It really, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go into my goose. I'm going to add a little nostril. By there. I'm going to add his eye. By there. And then I'm just going to add a couple of lines. A couple of dots on his neck. I'm going to add a line across his tail back here. I'm going to add a few lines on his tail. And then under his legs here. I'm going to add some lines. I'm going to add a couple of lines to his legs make them look stripy. I'm just going to define the edges of his feet with those two C's that we drew earlier. There we are. And Actually, you can see his second eye here, so I'm going to draw it in. And maybe from the corner here, I'm just going to add a little line to show that maybe he has a little smile. And there's our goose. If you drew along with me, I'd really, really like to see it. If you are not in my class and you drew along, painted along some other way, um, tag me on social media at KTME Creative. I'm going to peel these edges now because that is super satisfying. Uh, remember when you peel... Be careful that your paint is dry. You are more likely to rip your paper if your paint is wet. And when you peel, peel as flat to the page, slowly and away from the page. As you can see me pulling here. And go slow, 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 slow. I'd much prefer you go super slowly and save your painting, then rush it and do a giant tear across your painting. Oh, sorry. And now I'm going to leave this 100% dry for a little bit. And then once this is dry, I'm going to go in it again, into it again, just on the side and take that sheet off like we did before we started. And there's your goose. Have a good week and maybe I'll see you next week. Who knows?